Hello again everybody and we now turn to Cicero. He's long regarded as the ultimate craftsman of stylish Latin. He was also a man absolutely central to Rome and Roman history in the first century BC. Came from a relatively modest uh, provincial background and he rose through uh, the political ranks uh, partly through his career as a lawyer and partly through uh, his skillful manipulation of the political process to occupy the consulship, the pinnacle of political power in the Roman Republic. In the turbulent years uh, of the ongoing civil war in the first century BC, uh, during that he was exiled. Uh, during that time his house was knocked down and replaced with an altar to liberty uh, he was then restored and the altar of liberty was removed and his house was rebuilt. He served as a governor of a province of Cilicia in southeast Turkey. As a governor, he seems to have been quite a diligent and honourable governor, uh, but he absolutely hated it. Uh, longing to be back in Rome in the cut and thrust, as you were, of senatorial life. Two themes emerge from this letter, as you will see. It was written to Marcus Caelius Rufus, who was an up-and-coming, uh, ambitious politician, sometimes described as one of the angry young men of Roman politics, and it was written in 50 BC. This is what it says. From Laodicea, 4th of April, 50 BC, to Marcus Caelius Rufus. Would you have ever believed it possible that words fail me, and not only those words you public speakers use, but even my humble sort of language? But they do fail me, and this is why. I am extremely nervous about what is going to be decreed concerning the provincial governorships. My longing for Rome is quite unbounded. You could not believe how I long for my friends, and most of all for yourself. My province, on the other hand, bores me completely. This may be because the degree of distinction which I feel I have already attained in my career makes me not so much ambitious to add to it as fearful of impairing it. Or perhaps it's because the whole business is unworthy of my capacities in comparison with the heavier burdens which I can bear and often do bear in the service of my country. Or it may be because we are menaced by the horror of a major war potentially against the Parthians in the east, in these parts which I seem likely to avoid if I leave the province on the appointed day. The matter of the Panthers is being carefully attended to by my orders through the agency of the men who make a practice of hunting them. But there are surprisingly few of the animals, and those that there are, I am told, complain that in my province they are the only living creatures for which traps are laid. So rumour has it that they've decided to evacuate the province and live in Caria. Nevertheless, strenuous attempts are being made, and by nobody more than Patiscus. Anything that's caught will be yours, but what it'll be, I have no idea. I am deeply interested in your candidature for the Edileship, I assure you. This very day reminds me of it, because I'm writing this on the actual day of the Megalensian Games. Please write me the most careful accounts of the entire political situation. For whatever information I receive from you, I shall regard as more reliable than anything else. Well, two themes emerge from there. And I'm going to take the second of those first, and that is Panthers. There was an insatiable appetite in Rome for entertainment in the games both gladiators and different sorts of animals. Exotic beasts were imported from all around the empire, uh, sometimes wiping out or seeming to wipe out entire species. This is actually an early example of destroying ecosystems and biodiversity with the absence of panthers. But the first theme is how much did Cicero miss Rome? It was the only place to be for a politician. Once he tasted political power, he wanted more. How true that is. How many leaders, once they've had their hands on the levers of power, find they can retire gracefully. And I wonder how many should.